Okay. Aha, yes. So this is the ChatGPT uh, code copilot. Uh, it's not uh, the one I'm familiar with, but this is the one recommended by GPT when I log in. So I just use it. Uh, apparently, it does have some new feature like start with the Python. Uh, not seem to set the content of the so every conversation had a content. It's called GPT General Generative Pre Trained Model. It trained on all the possible uh syntax uh, uh corpus document they can find. So it's certainly not specific to a particular Python program. Start with Python, just set the content. And if you think about the <clears throat> improbability of perspective, it basically probably puts some prior probability in the downstream. But so if, if you think of how to implement it, right? if you have a general uh, distribution, but then you want to set a contact, then you just add a condition. That doesn't seem to this. <laughs> but for, not, for, for the time being, uh, for example, if you, if you think about the general probability is this queue behind, is this Chattanooga. But imagine this is the matrix in the simulated world. Right, that sounds a bit scary. Right? <laughs> okay, but let's, let's just follow this route. But let's, this entire city is the simulated. But it's based on the probability generated by, uh, let's say, some people on the moon. But then now we want to start with another contact Python, gigantic animal, gigantic animal, and then we just somehow need to change the whole landscape again. If you assume this is the probability matrix, at this high spot, there is the, something successful will happen. At the low spot, something bad will happen. According to a, the guru on the whole, but according to that magic of Python, you know, on the mountain, something bad should happen. On the wall, something good should happen. <laughs> So if you, you're going to change the whole landscape according to that Python map. So, uh, I see some of you nodding in head. Maybe this message is better. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> anyhow, this is basic context. For example, uh, this happens a lot when people are bilingual. If, if you, for example, if I talk to you in English, and then if I talk to my parents in Chinese, the way I think is different when I switch the, the way I talk. And I so there's a context. When you apply for something, there's a context. Right? So here again, so the general, the ChatGPT is general, generative pre-trained model, pre-trained on so many things. It's not tuned to Python or programming language. So we start with the uh, Python set of the phone. Uh, by the way, this coding code is already fine-tuned, but it's fine-tuned for any other programming language. C++, Java, JavaScript, uh, XML, I don't know they can think about probably. It's called coding code It's actually not specific for Python. So start with Python, also set the phone. So back to the less, uh, Less prone to hallucinating. <laughs> you, you probably had the word heard the word hallucinating. Uh, the idea is basically ChatGPT is basically like a magic dice. Right? So if you I have a dice, with it. Uh, if you throw a dice, uh, it's going to a uh, regular dice is a six outcome. You will get one or six, but. This general pre-trained model is basically this magical dice with so many possibilities. It's going to repeat what all the recorded human history you can find. So, in, if you think about it, 
You let the chat GPT change all the people's life. You let it read, let it run it again. You basically try to assimilate all the events that wrote it in and let the life appear in a different sequence. So, uh, you know, we start stop acting like this. <laughs> so, 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 but this is basically what the, the, the whole GPT is called stochastic modeling. It's basically the same thing with any probability model. And they, if you Google online, there's a strong critique of ChatGPT is what? It's called stochastic parrot. But what does parrot? We just repeat, people tell it, right? But ChatGPT, we call it stochastic parrot because we train with all the human's word and then it come up stochastically. <laughs> well, I just thought that <laughs> this is actually one of the strong critique of a uh, generative brain trend model, this large language model. I mean, it certainly is, has its merit. Right? It, it, basically, large language model is exactly a stochastic apparent. Uh, but if you use it, you realize it does seem to have some high-level rhythmic ability there. So it's something it's something nobody expected. And um, in fact, nobody know how it does. Still, nobody know why it can do that. <laughs> so, uh, if you talk to people, people can, this is not engineering, this is discovery, because engineering means mean we build a bridge, we calculate how much weight is too hard, there's a truck, you see the, the limit of how, how much the bridge can. We know what they do, uh, but in in this larger language model, we don't know what it is doing. <laughs> so we just build it, and then it does this, and we don't know why it do, why it is doing this. So in that perspective, a bit of scary. So it's so basically, it can do something seem to be have reasoning or intelligence, but we don't know why it is doing that. So there's a whole research field called alignment or experimental or safety of AI because we don't know why how it does this. So then how do you prevent something bad from happening? So okay, sorry. I think uh, let's come back focus on this. Uh, so we start with the uh so so. This is code part, it does have some uh, shortcut. Help, fix, quick fix, explain, review, search, read. And uh, it just shows some introduction how you use it. But then uh, this is my, uh, <clears throat> it's a conversational. So what I put is uh, provide a comprehensive list of important concepts for Python programming language. Uh, I have to say this is really impressive. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> well, basically syntax, uh, you didn't put an example, comment in, the, in, in Python indentation is very important. In other languages like Java, C++, it is those different uh, parentheses, curly parentheses, smooth, for, uh, those are more important. But those are also important in Python, but in Python, many of the grammar indentation is also much more important. So that's a kind of unique thing of Python indentation, of course, variable content, uh, data type, numerical sequence, text, matching, which is dictionary, set, boolean type. This is interesting. Python has a specific type called non type. Not many other language. Uh, in fact, in C or C plus plus, if you do that very often, it's just a, I forgot floating, some pointer error or something. There, there's an error there if you, if you do that in other strong type of language. But Python specifically gives a non type. Does Java do this? I don't remember. Uh, and, but you can ask <laughs> with a, what other language has a non type, data type. Yeah. <clears throat> Operate, those are kind of universal. Uh, 
a respect comparison greater than equal than less than absolute greater than to the less than others right a uh, bitwise operation those are also kind of a common assignment right uh in computer science assignment is almost like an error put something on the right to the left uh the interesting part in Python, we can do multiple assignments. Uh, that's actually a very convenient feature. Uh, so in many in Python, you can say A and B equal something. <laughs> so that's kind of neat. Uh, it save you some typing. Uh, identity of the membership of the uh, actually I forgot what it was on Python. Uh, and talk a little, yeah, the, the problem of using ChatGPT, um, like for me now, I have less, uh, because I now think at a high level, some of the low level, I think I have to start to forget about it. <laughs> so, uh, it's good and bad uh, when, when we start to get comfortable with how, how to use generative AI. But, on the other hand, I don't have to remember MATLAB, R, Python, or what those things are. Like. And those used to be a big deal, right? So I use uh, Python, R, MATLAB, uh, HTML almost on a daily basis with fixed language. So it's very easy to get to you. I type a, a, a Python code into R, type a MATLAB code into Python. <laughs> it happens so often, I mean. So, but with ChatGPT, those problems are done. Okay, so control functions. Now, you can read this on your own clearly. A data structure list, tuple, sets, dictionary. Com compre oh, comprehension is one of the unique features of Python. List <clears throat> uh, comprehension. So, comprehension are, is probably in, in some other language, but it's definitely not in C, C, Java. But comprehension is one of the skill. If you can show that during job interview, you can impress people. <laughs> so yeah. uh, comprehension in Python is a good way uh, to show you have a good knowledge of how Python language works. Fire handling, exception handling, yes. Exception, uh, the joke is, you have to know how to exception to be an exceptional software engineer. <laughs> so that's a, if you Google the the, the joke on that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> object oriented programming is also classical. I, in fact, Python is not a good language to do that. Even though you can do that, but it's not a strong type of OOP programming language. Uh, in fact, some of the computer science faculty insist we should. Uh, Teach other languages, C plus uh, Java, because of the because they think OOP is an important topic computer science and Python does it so poorly, so it's not good language. So, so <clears throat> okay, iterator, generator, those are also you can find in other language. Uh, C plus plus also has that. Uh, that's good. I'm not familiar with this part actually. And then uh, those actually uh, with this is also used a lot. Uh, regular, uh, I said this is comprehension, but regular expression is not specifically to Python, it is uh, <clears throat> to many other languages. Regular expression is a language on its own, it's almost like shell program. So, but <clears throat> because Python uh, has been used to process many of the text. Document so regular expression is a very important skill. That said, uh, with ChatGPT, that problem also. <laughs> I used to remember so much uh, regular expression, but now I forgot almost all of them. I just asked ChatGPT to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. it, it's it's a useful skill, but it's almost like uh, things you have to do for the compiler programming. But then you have a high language, you don't have to do that anymore. So. <clears throat> okay, of course, a lot of library has been encouraging. We can't skip those. Uh, this is actually good. Uh, but the problem is, uh, 
Oh, by the way, I also summarized the 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 transcript from the recording from previous year. It shows my the last year I started with the uh, uh <clears throat> Python syntax, basic Python example, example loop indentation, OOP, for example. That's what I did last year, interactive. Q and A with uh, ChatGPT, and then apparently I also tried to use the API to do the web data on the probably Nova, but it didn't work because I don't have the API. So I also tried to use Python to draw something, uh, <clears throat> and then I just said modify those to be more efficient to learn Python, and give you this code which. Uh, I basically copy paste into this uh, GitHub. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so this is basically a uh, code generated by uh, GPT-4, but I put it into a collab. So if you click that icon, uh, it should open up in collab. Yeah, in, in your case, it probably good to ask you give me a warning. Say this is. A code from GitHub, are you sure not to open? It's okay, just open. Besides, it's on Colab. Yeah. <clears throat> so, this bit, like, uh, it goes to basic syntax, uh, numbers, or that bracket, or list. Uh, calculate the average, and so that's a default function. Sum of a uh, number uh, divided by the length of the number, and then we have the average. Print the average. And here's the exercise. Oh, this is nice. It even gives you ask you to do exercise. Create the list of number and calculate it. But it's already here, so you can just copy paste multiple. <laughs> so yeah, it does. So you see the problem of chat right? It does ask you to do the exercise, but. Oh, the answer is right above it. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> data type. Uh, so, this will be a string text type. But this one is nice. This is dictionary. So, it does give you a dictionary. Uh, by the way, the impressive part the whole code around without any bug. So, this is a very simple. This The GPT generated all this, it runs. 100% uh, operational. I mean, I wouldn't say it's perfect. It here, clearly there's an issue here. It asks you to do exercise but give you an answer. But that's not a uh, programming, it's a logical design problem. So even though it can, it, it, it asks, say we should design the question, but you have to put the answer right there. <laughs> so it's a design problem. So you can think a little bit, but not very, very well. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> uh, here's a good exercise. Create a list uh, of your favorite food and then write a dictionary with the price. I probably can update it with the Catanica public <laughs> if you have public. <laughs> so uh, probably do that. Uh, just get it from, if you have not used Google Collab, you can do that. Can someone share your screen? Uh, would, would, like, would someone like to share your screen? How you run it? Um, I'm not even able to, the link you sent and the Zoom chat, it says that you know, I'm not able to access the conversation. When I tried to type in code copiling just on Google search, it said that I needed to register for chat GBT. Yes, but I already have it, but it still won't let me access the link. I have that issue my laptop, and then I switched to this meeting. Okay. Oh, yeah. I tried it, but it automatically like. Oh no, that's Google. Oh, they will Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a different AI. Yeah, yeah that's a different AI. AI. Yeah, since the uh, I didn't even get to try it. I said it for me. Good, good. <laughs> so the the pricing is so simple. The Google should have even tried. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone else have an issue with it? Uh, with the chat GPT, I, I, okay, can you log, will you? So, 
Oh, I see. Do you see the problem? Well, you will not be with your work. Oh, I see the problem. When you log into your chat B account, you need to switch your workspace for the key to your chat B. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right, I think it'll be like that. But how about I try again? <clears throat> so on chat B, you can switch your profile. Now you can see it? Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay. <clears throat> Next time, they can do it. Okay, let me <clears throat> put down that thing. Maybe, maybe I should start the, the project because the, it doesn't look like the, it, it's helpful. <clears throat> so the I'll, I'll, let me put that collab uh, uh, in the chat as well. It's under GitHub. Although uh, you have to go to the collab. Once you click, it's under collab. Yeah, it's the pipe. Uh, Can someone share your screen? Oh, that's right. Uh, Austin, can you share your screen? <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, it says post disabled participant screen. Sorry. It's enabled. Uh, So, uh, can you try to type? Uh, I, I, I'm kind of curious how the Google Gmail automatically will be. Oh, it does. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it does. Okay. Oh, gee. Uh, but I did but how, how does it know uh, pizza, pasta, salad? Where did those things come from? I think it just is guessing that those are my favorite foods. But it's repeatable though. It is it's, it's not randomly occurs. Can you erase that re type? It does it still pizza pasta salad? Yeah. It's still there. So it's this is interesting. It it's not random. <laughs> uh how about the I, I, I kind of wonder where this thing came from. Instead of favorite food, check that to your favorite uh, Mexican food. How about that? Uh, <laughs> we will not change the. Uh, I changed just the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now the the prompt is different. Okay, well at least it, it is complex dependent. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Uh are that interesting. I wonder whether you can fine tune that. Uh, so I, I'm going to uh <clears throat> go back to share my screen again. Yeah. Here's the part where the Python indentation is. So if I if I put this one like uh, remove that uh, actually if I run out of that equal set uh, <coughs> run in a different block. Okay, now it says actually is that it? Yeah, could I just uh, start? Did I say this is the invitation arrow? So. 
<coughs> I, this is actually interesting. Explain I wrote that clearly in Colab AI tool. Actually, uh, yeah, this is Colab, uh, Google Colab. Yeah. Very nice. It actually also has me to just add it there. In fact, I can copy there, just paste it back. But this makes a lot of people can really lazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if I just copy and paste it, and yet, oh, that's still not there. Uh, oh, the, but this is a logical error because fruit is not defined. And the fruit is here. Good price is not the fact. I can just run the entire part of the Then you could be fine. Price the other part of the Yeah, but I think it's not a good thing. Okay, now it's a but it does like a, a collab and Jimmy, this integration is very helpful. Yeah. And this is the Python function. Um, many of you uh, probably have learned this, so. They seem to be <clears throat> a bit uh, that overview, I guess. So this is object oriented program. We have a example of class inheritance and a method. We have a shape which has a <clears throat> completely active function called area. Any shape has an area, but then <clears throat> we have a class rectangle inherited from the shape uh, parent. And then we have a constructor uh, who initiate the rectangle with what length and the width. So the rectangle we have length and the width. And the uh, <clears throat> area of rectangle will be redefined as the product of length and the width. Perfect uh, execution of uh, OOP in Python. <clears throat> and then we have another uh, children of rectangle square. Square was what? Side. The two sides are the same. And then you just call the rectangle with a side twice. And this is very smart. Uh, it didn't repeat the area function, it just called the rectangle function. So, yeah, the, this is all that you can do. <laughs> so, it, in, in, in the past, if we did this exam in the undergrad, this part, the, the square part, probably some of the students will make some mistake there. So, but the, this is all done by the <laughs> so, and then the circle, well, circle is quite different from the rectangle and square. So it started with this entirely different. Inher uh, inherent from the shape, but now redefined with what it is. And then the area of the circle will be pi square R radius. So it's apparently all done together. So, <coughs> I remember when many years ago when I started teaching OT, this has to be almost closer to middle term. And then we spend a lot of time to talk about shape or sometimes the building uh, or sometimes the fruit. 
And then you have Apple. <laughs> so, but now this is all done. I'll take care of our chat meeting. <laughs> yeah. I think it has really changed quite a lot. By the way, how, uh, in your own university, how do you learn uh, programming now? I'm just curious. Who, who is a uh, who has learned programming? Your I mean, it's pretty much just like basic assignments. Like, okay. At least, like when I was doing like Python, I think it was like one of the assignments we had to do was like create like a program that just includes like different if and else statements or like has a function when I was doing Python. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to show you later on the, with a chat GP 4 you literally just can take a screenshot of the assignment and put it <laughs> so you don't even have to type that anymore. <laughs> uh, I, when I use my iPads, take a picture, I need to give the answer. <laughs> so very, uh, it's very helpful when I, when I teach my daughter for Latin. I never took Latin myself. <laughs> so but my daughter uh, has trouble to do a lot of uh, Latin homework. Uh, honestly, I still know zero, but uh, with ChatGPT, I can do something. <laughs> so, yes. Uh -huh. They use what? Oh, can you share the screen? Uh, 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 can you share your screen? But you can just put the kid there without typing, I mean. Oh, you create a problem in C. Okay. This is even more challenging. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no offense to Python. <laughs> but C is more challenging. Yeah. Wow. This is. Obviously, uh, that does more than. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, more than the. A classical GPT four. This is four O. So it automatically has a uh, uh, you can actually run C code in some. Uh, how 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 do you run C code? Your or it was one of the five examples we are following the I said, can you can you run that C code to see whether it works? Oh yeah, I see the online compiler. Uh, oh yeah, it's wrong. Is the result correct? Thirty four. Uh, I mean, uh, but it does compile and run given result. I mean, functionally, it works. Uh, not sure about the logic. But do you have the correct answer on the test? <laughs> so. <clears throat> oh, sorry, what? Oh, what's the result that we already know? Oh, okay. So they thought, okay, well, it's correct with that. I use consistent. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you. Uh, this is very interesting. <clears throat> Oh, here's a good exercise. Write the generate function, write the... Okay. If we just cut, uh, take a screenshot of this, uh, if you write it all, <laughs> what do you think this will get? Okay. 
This actually right the generated function is very important still in machine learning because uh, very often the data uh, the, the input data is so large you cannot load into uh, memory or directly. So uh, with generated function you can load a chunk of it. So know how to write a generated function to partition a large input data into a small chunk is a very important skill in machine learning. So that's the, that's actually, looks like a kind of generic exercise, but it's a, a machine learning training, uh, a very important skill. Well, this is especially true for genomic, like the, how big is the human genome in nucleotide? I thought you can have 30 billion. <laughs> so, so, uh, I want to say 3 billion. Is that correct? Does the 30 billion really? <laughs> how, how big is a human genome size in nuclear time? How many nuclear are in human genome? Yeah, 3 billion days there. Oh, I still have good memory. No, I don't. No early signs are all that much. <laughs> so that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, really building, if you put that into uh, computer memory, that's a lot. And that's just one person. <laughs> uh, if you want to do so called precision medicine, kill cancer, you're going to train a lot of people. At my, so, you just put that there, it's just not practical. So how to <coughs> train genuinely make the data more efficient is a, is a very important skill. <coughs> Even for large language model, that's something. So how to make a large language uh, model run on uh, less efficient, uh, less computer intensive environment, including your phone, your laptop, uh, it's also important. Uh, this comprehension, yeah. Uh, this comprehension apparently is not taught in many basic programming language, of course, because it's not a, a universal concept. But this comprehension is it kind of show off skill. <laughs> so people who write Python well often use this comprehension because people in Java or C++ don't do it. <laughs> so it, it works well in job interview. Uh, so you can use a comprehension, write a one line code. Otherwise you had to write probably a dozen lines of code to do that. So, who, who use comprehension? Quite a bit. Oh, question. They are <laughs> heavy. Okay, yeah. So, what do you use it for? Okay, they are. Oh. You are from UT Austin? Yes. Oh. Which class uh, you taught a lot of, use a lot of? Um, my English class. Oh, I'm awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, usually in Python, you see that. Yeah, Java, C++, don't see that. It's also not one of the universal software engineering concepts. So this comparison is just like, I'm not sure, it probably doesn't even run more efficiently. It just looks, looks more efficient. What's the advantage of this comparison? Uh, of course, you can ask that to be the first piece of What is the advantage? Can someone ask uh, what's the advantage of uh, this comprehension versus regular? Uh, so. What does the TPP say? Uh, conciseness, performance, readability, functional programming, and inline filtering. 
concise, yes. Readability, that's clearly it's not because <laughs> that's not correct. Yeah. Performance, maybe, yeah, because, but readability definitely is not an advantage on this uh, temporary hang. It, it's actually the joke is uh, Python comprehension is incomprehensible. <laughs> so that's, that's a joke. <laughs> comprehension is incomprehensible. Comprehensible. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, in fact, uh, one of my PhD, uh, the JCPD, if you think I'm just moving words from one word to another, uh, one of my PhD students write the write code using a, a machine learning function called load to back, it's a graph tokenization function. And then Essentially, if you put the explanation documentation, say this loading embedding, and ask my student, what exactly is loading embedding? And he showed that it's not loading embedding, it's traversal path embedding. But the function has a name called node to vector, which has to be that put that in the right thing. Uh, so it's, it's, in this case, you just look at the face value. And just stop there. Explain it on our face value. <clears throat> okay. Uh, then. We can actually try uh, many other things. Uh, for example, you can actually intentionally <coughs> A very uh, so a very common way to uh, a very common way for me <laughs> to I have to read the student code. I put the exact code there, ask ChatGPT to go over find out the bugs, and then identify the key issue. It, it's uh I don't know about how how you discuss it. It's actually very hard to understand other people's code. <laughs> well, and then if we don't have auto grader, that grading assignment can really help them. I see something doesn't look pleased when the if your homework is graded by that, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's sometimes that's just uh, make the job much easier. <clears throat> In fact, uh, when I grade the uh, uh, software engineering report, uh, the, so for software engineering sprint is two week, two week. Uh, <clears throat> sprint plan, sprint report, every two weeks later. Uh, uh, plan report progress update. So, uh, week one to two, you have plan to report. Week three to four, you need to have plan based on progress. Or uh, week one to two, and then week three and four plan report. And there are sixty students, ten teams, actually eleven teams. Well, let's say ten teams, two weeks. Next week, four week. How do I keep track of all those things? I just stop everything. <laughs> so, yeah, and then but when I done it, I actually say, here's my rubric. Team one should do this for every every week. For for week three to four, compare team one to its report on team one to two. Identify inconsistency in the progress, and then identify. The area is improvement for three and four, then align it with team four plan is it addressing this or not? Right. So three to four, and then I look at the four to five plan and the report. So at, at the end of three three to four, look at the pro uh, progress, is it addressing the plan of a uh, three to four? So oh this makes every team on its heels because they cannot miss it. That's Human can easily miss this if you read hundreds, ten documents, hundreds of pages. Human can easily miss it. But for ChatGPT, 
it's really keep every team on in line with this site. I, I know you, you at certain point you probably also get to that project, but this is just to tell you that with the AI tool, uh, <clears throat> in previous year, I just look at the weekly report, think from my recollection whether the basics are right or not. But now I do have an AI tool to help me keep track of it. And if, if a, a team really slack off and doesn't do things, and it'll be flat. And, and what's more important, the ChatGPT actually, based on my rubric, ranked the team from the first one to the last one, it was brought to it. And explain why this team is getting so low performance on this criteria. I didn't understand this aspect, but uh, it's very impressive. Right? So, yeah, so this this year the overall the team performance much better <laughs> because I I have this I, I know how to keep track. There's so many things, so many problems. Yeah. This actually not really good. If, if you think have a large company, there will be thousands of people. I mean, in Amazon, Google, there are twenty thousand programmers. <laughs> so it, I'm pretty sure they will use AI to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So six days do the best sounds a lot of it compared to large companies, also not a lot. Yeah. So we can try many other things. Uh, the other <clears throat> so in the, in the past when I do the uh, Python coding program. Uh, also had the protein adaptation biophysics, uh, bioinformatics, transformer. <coughs> oh, There's a lot. Uh, yeah. So, which of you is really new to Python? But what language do you are familiar with? What language do you are familiar with? Um, in your school, the anti Python wins. <laughs> so, in my school, the, the pro Python wins. <laughs> Okay, so we, we actually debated about whether we should use C plus plus or Python as the primary language, but the Python can't win. <laughs> so, <laughs> but in your school, the C plus can win. So. I, I kind of wonder how long it's a lab. Yeah, C plus plus C is very hard to do a lot of deep. So, in a year or two, that C power can probably will do that. <laughs> so my prediction is <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, even even in the engineering, mechanical engineering, electronic, they are going to switch from MATLAB to Python because MATLAB is just not the adequate for the machine learning. Okay, so what's on our schedule? Uh, we can have a break and then decide what kind of exercise you want to work on. Uh, in fact, the last year I uh, I asked a student to use ChatGPT to generate some uh, plot in Python. And you can even go even further, probably see whether you can do an interactive plot. So, in fact, one of my daughter's uh, homework assignment is to generate the, I think it's the library called Pi Turtle or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you heard about it. So, yeah. Uh, I tried to use ChatGPT to do that. But at that time, it's 
classical chat GPT it doesn't handle the image well, so it cannot do it. But now the chat GPT four O it can recognize the image directly. Probably can. If I try that whole Kassan again, maybe it will do it. Up. But at that time, I had to manually do that assignment. Apparently, my uh, my daughter's the teacher knows very well the chat GPT doesn't handle the image well. So he gave that assignment. I thought, oh, this teacher really knows ChatGPT, <laughs> and he knows that ChatGPT cannot do this assignment. <laughs> so, yeah. so, <clears throat> I don't know with the ChatGPT for OE that can multi model uh, whether that teacher had new tricks. <laughs> so, so. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we can try. Uh, have anyone tried to use ChatGPT to do uh, data analysis? Like, like giving it like a like a file that just right, right. And let's that that's a good exercise. Okay, how about we do that now? Let's take a break and let me uh ten minutes you can take some uh if you don't like you can also take some on the back to your room. Uh, that will cover them too. Okay, <laughs> see what <clears throat> let's uh, take a ten minute break. Uh let me prepare a data file.